This topic is topic of Sihr al-Tafriq. Now, Sihr tafriq tafriq means separation. And this is the most widespread Sihr uh, amongst uh, families and amongst the society. This is the most widespread sihr. In the verse of sihr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the shayateen learning from Harut and Marut, the sihr. It's a Baqarah verse, around verse 100. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the shayateen learning sihr. And the main objective of this sihr that they were learning the first time, it was to separate from each other, be it husband and wife, or be it parents from children, or children from parents, or be it siblings separating from one another, cutting ties, breaking ties, or even uh, colleagues and friends. Companions, okay, colleagues, friends, and companions, or companions, friends, and colleagues. Okay, so this is the most uh, widespread sihr amongst, sadly, amongst the Muslim community, and even amongst the non Muslim community, this sihr is done. <coughs> the sihr is done this sihr is done by an enemy towards someone that he hates and he wants to he wants to he or she wants to separate uh, them from their spouses or from their friends. Uh, he wants to separate for, uh, him from his family or his friends or his partners and so forth and so on. So amongst non-Muslims, the sihr is also done. Uh, I want you to first identify that sihr. Okay? That's what I'm going to talk about, how to identify that sihr. And I want every one of you to identify that sihr. So I'm going to give you a list of Symptoms, but I'll, get, I'll go in detail. So I'll not just give you a bullet point symptom. Like I will go, I'll give you the bullet point symptom and I'll go in detail how it works. Okay, so I want you to have pen and paper. Okay, have pen and paper so you can note them down, inshallah ta'ala. And I'll go in quite detail of how to then finding out that sihr and then eventually how to cure it, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. So have pen and paper, please. Notebook would be better because then you can always refer back to it. Okay. If you love someone or have care for someone, that love and care will be either biological or it's either your, your or either it's not biological. So it's either biological or it's, or it's not biological. So 
biological, for example, your parents. Your parents, for example, your siblings, yeah, your aunties and your uncles and aunties, right? Your cousins and relatives. These are biological. Yeah. Non-biological, like your friends, yeah, uh, your companions, your friends, your colleagues, the people you see day to day, and you meet and you greet. This is non-biological. So the, the first one is embedded within our soul. It's embedded within our fitra, the, the biological love and care. The second one is also embedded in our soul, embedded in our fitra, but it takes, it takes time and actions and, and, and sacrifice for it to grow. The love and the care or the care and the love. So, Sihr Tafriq comes and he wants to take you away from the first group of people, which is the biological group, and also the second group of people, which is the non-biological group, but you've become close with, or you want to become close with. Okay? So it comes and takes away, takes you away or takes them away from, right? These two types or categories of care and, and love. Okay, please note them down because I'm gonna go in detail, quite detail, so please note them down. So you've got Biological care and love, and then we've got non-biological care and love. Biological are those who are related to you in blood. Non-biological is that people you meet and, and every day, and you have this connection with them, friendship, companionship, friendship, or work-related. Yeah, and you have some care for them, you have some empathy, you have some sympathy, beyond the natural human empathy and sympathy which you have for general humanity or general creation. Okay, so how does then Sheikh Tafriya come and take you away from this, uh, these people whom you are close to, whom you have care, whom you are love? Firstly, the Sheikh Tafriya, he works at the surface level of your heart, the surface level of your heart. Okay. And the longer it takes or you take for uh, you to cure yourself from that, then the slowly, slowly it goes deeper and deeper to your, within your heart. So first it starts on the surface level of the heart, where your emotions <coughs> manifest, right? Not the feeling, the feeling is here, so it supposes your heart. The feeling is here, it's at, it's at the depth level, especially biological, it's at the depth core level, yeah? And the, the Sahel Tafriq is at the Zest. So, so when, you want to, when you want to express the love, that's when the Sahel Tafriq comes and prevents you. But you feel the love here, you feel the care here, deep down in your soul, okay? So, Sayyid Tafriq comes and sits at the surface level of your heart. As soon as you want to manifest your care and love towards your, towards your, say, parents or towards your spouse or towards your siblings, you'll be unable to express it. It comes and it prevents you from expressing it. So hugging, for example, or kissing your parents, or be it your spouse, you want to come close to him or her, right? It will come. It will be triggered. It will prevent you. It will prevent your heart, right? It's like it 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 then um, flashes some toxic or injects some toxic feelings within your heart. And it's like it injects it from the top, 
and then it spreads within your heart to null your feelings, biological feelings or natural feelings towards your spouse, for example. It nulls it, right? It numbs it also, by which you are unable to, minimum, you're unable to express that, okay? You're unable to go, go, go further towards your, uh, let's just take, stick to spouse, for example. You're, you're, you're unable to go towards your spouse anymore because it, it injects from the surface, injects a toxic, you can call it poison, Within your within your heart, but which it num numbs and null nulls your your feelings towards your spouse. That's the minimum level. The maximum level, it can even put hatred in there. It can even put violence, uh, aggression, and violence in there. Okay. So. The first symptom of soft tafriq is that if you know in your mind that this is my father, this is my mother, this is my husband, this is my wife, and now and, and, uh, I, this is my brother, this is my sister, or this is my nephew, this is my niece, and I love them either biologically or I love them because of my companionship with them or because I know them, right? Say your spouse, your husband, wife, so I love, you know that you love your wife, you can feel it deep down in your soul, deep down in your heart, you can feel the love. Oh, I love my husband. You can feel it deep down in your soul, deep down in your, in your uh, uh, heart. But as soon as you want to come close or you want to express your love towards them, you feel a prevention. You feel a prevention, but you feel it in the, in the heart, not you feel a physical barrier outwardly, externally, no, you feel it in your heart. So it's like something injects in your heart, nullify and numb the emotional feelings towards your husband or towards your wife. So that's the first symptom. The first symptom is you have that love there, you have that care there, but as soon as you want to express that, manifest it, you feel that there is a barrier. So natural question is, if you have that love, if you have that care for your spouse, for your husband or for your wife, you're meant to express it because you've got it there. So next stage is to express it. But if you're unable to express it and you want to express it, you want to express it, but if you're unable to express it, then know that is sihar tafri. That's the first symptom. Okay, so please note this down. The second symptom is you are unable to express it and your spouse, he or she, he or she can see that you are unable to express it. So he or she comes close to you the more close he or she comes to you, the more petrified and scared you become. The more petrified and scared you become. The more agitated you become. You want to leave the room. You want, if, if he or she is sitting next to the sofa, you want to get up and leave. You just don't want to be with him or her. And this could be with your parents. This could be with your siblings. As soon as they enter the room, you just want to go. You just don't want to sit and talk to them, have a chit chat with them, be it in important issues or be it in casual issues, right? You, you just feel agitated to be around them. Okay. So that's the next symptom is when your spouse or when your uh, uh, parents or when your siblings want to come close, they want to come close to you, they want to come and talk to you, they want to sit down with you, you avoid it or you get agitated or you get angry or the worst is you get aggressive. You, get, you become violent. And you may think it's you, you may not think it's shaitan because the feelings are so intense in your soul, in your heart. 
So you might not even think it's shelter. Especially if he has been left for so long within your within yourself and he has mixed with the blood by which it becomes second nature. Okay. So that's the second symptom is when your parents or your siblings or your spouses, they try to come close to you, right? You avoid it, you become agitated, you become frustrated, you become moody, you get angry, and even you may even become aggressive. The third symptom, now I'm not going to give you the symptoms of all types of sihr. I'm just giving you the symptoms of sihr tafrit. Okay, sihr separation. The third symptom is uh, when you're around them, you're always tired and fatigued. Or you're always yawning. Like just next to them is like, and you act, even if you're not tired and fatigued, you act tired and fatigued just for, so that you can leave the, com leave the company. So you either become tired and fatigued and then you yawn, or you actually pretend to be tired and fatigued and you actually start yawning intentionally to show them that you're tired and fatigued so that they leave you alone or you can then leave. This is a third symptom. But with the yawning, the, the actual tiredness has to be there. Either the pretending tiredness has to be there or you actually tired and fatigued. That has to be there to separate from evil eye. Because there could be evil eye between you both. Someone has given you evil eye. So between you, if you have evil eye, if there's no tiredness and fatigueness, just yawning, then that's more of an evil eye. But if his tiredness and fatigue is there with the yawning, then that is more sihar Okay? That's the third symptom. The fourth uh, symptom is that you look for arguments. Even though you know this will make them angry, this will make them frustrated, this will make them uh, rage, you still look for those arguments to argue with them or to remind them or to say them those things so they get angry and they will tell you and then you will tell you. So you you be in, you know, you know, Popeye, you be in the ring fighting with them. That's what you want. You feel like just you want to fight them, beat them, and then completely knock them out, and then you still want to continue to beat them. That's why you feel that. And they feel the same. They want to completely humiliate you, like put you under their feet, right? And you also want to completely humiliate them, put them under the feet until they say give up or give in, right? And still you know, you're going to continue. It's like there's so much, uh, you want so much humiliation of them. Okay. You know, when you're, before you, before you go and talk to them, you know, if you say this, they'll get angry, they'll get frustrated. They will rage, but you still say it and you want to say it. Even though deep down you know that, that this will make them angry and this is someone that I love, I care for, but you still say it. You still want to humiliate them. You still want to insult them. You still want to hurt them. This could be your own mother. This could be your own brother. This could be your own sister. This could be your own uncle and auntie. Or this could be your own um, 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 husband and, and wife. Okay? But 
you still want to hurt them. You still want to humiliate them. You want to psychologically, mentally damage them. You want to physically uh, hurt them. You want to emotionally drain them. Does it make sense? It makes no sense. If you love someone, what do you want to do to them? Why do you want to emotionally completely drain them? Why do you want to psychologically make them unstable? Why do you want to completely, you know, take away their confidence and competence? Why do you want to do that? Through words. The reason? Sihr tafiq. Sihr separation is working here. So that you hurt them so much, right? They just, they just want to, don't want to be part of you. Part of your life. They will, just so that they don't be hurt, they either divorce you or they take khula or they avoid you, they boycott you. And you also boycott them. You also boycott them because they retaliate. They, they will sooner or later they will retaliate. Obviously, maybe in the beginning months or in the beginning years they'll be patient, but sooner or later they will start retaliating. And then it will hurt you also. And then that's the fourth symptom. The fifth symptom is that after the words, the bitter words has been said, the nasty words or the evil words has been said, uttered, is hurting you, then it becomes not the root cause or the root issues of the arguments. These are forgotten. For example, if uh, your father did injustice or your, or, or your parents did injustice, this injustice is forgotten. They just talk about what you did what, or what, what, what you said. And they also talk about what you said or what, what, what you did. They forget about the root issue. Similarly with the husband and wife, they forget about the root issue. So root issue could be the husband was not providing or the wife was being always going to her parents' house. You know, every weekend she's going, you know, she's not take, taking care of him or uh, she's not uh, socializing with his family, for example. So those are the root issues. But now the root issue is forgotten. The root issue is not spoken about. What's now spoken about, oh, you said this, and you said, you, you, you said that. And he will be like, no, but you said this, and you said that. So they speak about what was said. So you called, you called me um, lazy, or you said I'm not a man, or, or, or you said I'm a, I'm, I'm a I'm a daddy's girl or I'm a mommy's girl. Do you see? So, or I'm a mommy's boy, right? So it starts about, it becomes about what was said rather than the root issues. And then it, the arguments continue, continue, and the root issues are forgotten. And eventually, because the root, root issues are forgotten, the hatred, now the hatred begins to come in because the root issues are not being solved. And, and the her slowly, slowly begins to go into deep. So, uh, and then that eventually leads to either divorce or hula or the book. So, the last symptom is that the root issues are forgotten and what's spoken about is what was said. These are, these are real symptoms of sihat tafriq, from the internal to the manifestation. Okay. Let's talk about symptoms specifically in dreams. So, In the dreams, in the dreams, uh, the shaitan, I'll talk about the dreams the shaitan gave us. So in the dreams, the shaitan will show the worst in that person. Shaitan will show the worst in the person. 
So, for example, uh, the Sihat Tafri came uh, for you to be separated from your husband. Yeah? So, you will see your husband uh, committing haram with another woman. Yeah? Or you will see in the dreams that he is manipulating you, or he is deceiving you, or he is cheating on you, right? Or he's trying to humiliate you, or he's trying to hurt you emotionally, psychologically, mentally, or, or he's trying to um, hurt your family, yeah? So, you know, insult your family and, and so forth. You will see the worst of your of your negative thoughts physically in the dreams so in the dreams it will be manifesting the worst of the negative thoughts that you have about your husband okay so if you have negative thoughts of your siblings for example in the dreams the shayatin will show you the worst of your siblings As if, it's, as if it's happening. And you will wake up as if it was true because of the sheer emotions involved. The sheer emotions involved. So that's the first. The second in the dreams Yeah, the shouting will uh, specifically will try to uh, show you that he or she is trying to humiliate you in front of people, uh, privately and publicly. That will be a constant sort of dream that he or she, whichever way, is trying to humiliate you publicly and privately. Not by committing haram only, but like talking. So those two dreams, if you see like my husband or my wife is cheating, uh, or my husband or my wife is deceiving, or the second one, my husband or my wife is trying to humiliate me, then that's a sign of, clear sign of Sihat Tafriq. These, are from, these two dreams are from Shalti. As for the next dreams, I will come on and say, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to tell you that you have Sihat Tafriq, Sihat separation. So, in your dream, you see, for example, you've got, you've got Sihat Tafriq with your mother. In your dream, you see your mother is being possessed and you're also possessed. Or you're, you're possessed, your mother is trying to recite on you. Or your mother is possessed and you're trying to help or you're trying to recite on her. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, you've got sihat tafriq between you and your mother. Okay? Or you see your brothers. Your brothers are being possessed, your brothers are being attacked by people, yeah, known or unknown people, but if it's known, then that's more of a clear cut sihat tafriq. Yeah? And you're trying to help them. Or you're being attacked by known people and your brother's trying to help you. That's clear sign that you, you brothers have sihat tafriq. Okay? Um, the second dream is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you you've got tafriq is uh, you see the house that you're living in or you lived in right and there's chaos in the house there was like there's either shayateen or there's darkness or there's feces or like there's chaos and there's, 
and, and insects and stuff like that in the house though. It has to be in your own house, be it in the own house, be it in the own house you're living now or be it in your own house that you used to live. Yeah, It could be in your back home houses. As long as you see your own house, yeah, it's not unknown place, it's not unknown house, your own houses, right? It could be your husband's house, it could be your wife's house, that you went and you saw the house, you know the, how the house looks, right? Or it could be your back home houses or the houses that you lived in this country or you live in. As long as it's a house and you see chaos in the house, you see tables and chairs upside down, or you see darkness, or you see there's something there, or, or you see feces coming up from the toilet, or you see things possessing your families, then that's a sign, clear sign, explicit sign that you have, you and your family have sihat, definitely. Okay. These ones I mentioned, these are clear signs of sihat tafrit. Clear signs of sihat tafrit. Okay, now I'm gonna give you signs which are reality. I, I, it, it happens, or it has happened, right? So number one, you actually cannot get married. You actually cannot get married. This is reality, right? And it's not necessarily one person in the family, maybe two or three person in the family, they actually cannot get married. Or if they got married, there's so much chaos that divorce took place or divorce is taking place. It's a sign the family has sihat tafrih, sihat of separation. Second, From marriage proposals to the actual marriage, it's all chaotic. It's always chaotic in your family. From marriage proposals to the marriage itself and after marriage, it's all chaotic. Everything is always, when it comes to marriage in your family, it's always, always chaotic. Someone that doesn't want to be part of it, someone doesn't want to go with this family, someone doesn't like their sister or the brothers, and it just is constant arguments regarding who to marry, who not to marry, or how to proceed, how not to proceed. It's always challenging the marriage to go forward. Then the sign that there is a tafriq in the family. After marriage, there's always arguments on with petty issues. You don't know where the arguments are coming from. It's always petty. Okay? And it's always surrounding Issues of you said this, you said that, and to do with pride, arrogance, and they disguise it with respect, or dis they disguise it with rights. Should I say that again? So the arguments on petty issues, it's always about who said what and who's, who said uh, who did what, and it's around the circle is around uh, rights and respect, but in reality, it's pride and arrogance and stubbornness. Disguise it with respect and rights. My right was not given or she did not respect me, right? But the reality of it, it was not right. It was more like pride and arrogance and stubbornness. It was not about um, uh, whether he, he gave her affection or not, it's more about she wanted control, she wanted manipulation over him. Okay, 
So this disguise it with my rights were not given or uh, he was not respectful or he did not show en enough care. But the reality is pride, arrogance and stubbornness. So either you have to come to that conclusion, you know what, I'm, I've got pride, I've got arrogance, I've got stubbornness. Or I'm arguing with petty issues. These issues are petty, why am I arguing about them? Or why am I focusing on what he said and what she said, right? Why am I not focusing on the root issues or solving the root issues? Yeah, it's about you thinking and it's about the pe pe person neutral aligning that, okay, these are the issues. Okay, so the arguments, if the arguments are always around petty issues and the root issues are not being resolved, and it's always in your family these things happen, then you have sihat at tafriyat in your family. As you can notice, I'm saying family now more than individual, is because sihat at tafriyat generally, once it comes in, in an individual, in the family, it, whoever that did it, they usually do on the whole family generally speaking they don't they don't stick to one individual because in order for the self effort to work comprehensively completely and you know perfectly in, in their in the magician's eyes is that every i need to separate all of them okay the next symptom is that this can go on for years. Years. Between you and your uh, husband, or be between you and your parents, or between you and your sibling, it, it can go on for years and it doesn't go anywhere to resolve. I no one is thinking straight to resolve it. That's a sign. When no one in the household, in the family, is able to think straight to resolve these issues because every issue by human being can resolve, especially when you have blood connection, especially if you love one another, if you want to be, be together. So when there's no one is coming up with solutions to solve the problems, or no one is thinking able to think straight and come to a compromise or come to a reconciling, or at least come to the table and talk about it, then no sefer of separation has been done on yourselves and on the family. Now, suppose then divorce takes place between husband and wife. Now, if it continues to happen again, so now you're married again, same thing happens again, then that's obviously a clear cut. That there is sefer of tafriq on you. Okay, so I know some brothers and sisters, they got married, as I said, uh, last lesson or two lessons. I said, I, I, I know brothers and sisters got married three times, got divorced three times. This is the fourth marriage, yeah? That is clear cut sign that they have uh, they have to go and see a rocky. They definitely have, or most likely 99.9%, they have sefer of separation. Okay. Um, once you know these things are happening, once you know these things are happening, and you still don't sit down to resolve and talk, and you, you lead it, you let it get worse and worse and worse between you and your parents, between you and your siblings. That's also another sign, right? That you, you have safer tafriq between you both or between the, between the, amongst the family, yeah? Because you know where it's leading and you, you as a human being, if you know where it's leading or where it can lead to, it can lead to eventually you and your parents are lost. You, you, don't, you don't see one another or you and your siblings, you don't see one another 
or you, you and your husband, you don't see one another, and eventually divorce takes place, you know where it's leading, then you should step in and solve it, sit down and talk, and whoever, get the relevant people involved and solve it. But if you, if you know where it's leading, and you still continue to make it worse and worse and worse, then obviously, there's sihar at tafriq So these are, in a nutshell, some of the real tangible uh, uh, signs of sihat tafriq in you or in your family. Okay. Now, there is another sihat that's done with sihat tafriq usually. Especially if there is greed involved. So that one more time. There's another sihar that's done with sihar tafriq, especially when there's greed involved. But if there's no greed, just sheer envy, right? Then they don't do that, the second sihar. So if there is greed involved, then they want something from you or from your family. So they will do another sihar to achieve that. So the first sihar is to separate you. The second sihr they'll do is called sihr al-'ishq, sihr of ishq, sihr of of obsessive and possessive love, obsessive and possessive love. Okay, so. So, and this is usually done either by people who are greedy in terms of your wealth, they want your wealth and assets and income, or they want one of the individuals they, they wanted to marry and you did not give them. So they want, they want to take that person for themselves. So, these are the two main reasons why they will do sihr ish. Ish means love, obsessively and possessively. Okay, so I'll give you a real example. I'll give you an example. I want to listen carefully because this, this is experienced. I witnessed in my own eyes for the last good 40 years. Okay, so this uh, a father had sihat tafriq on him he had two wives okay so the first wife she said that when he married he was fine for good 10 years he was fine as soon as he married the second wife he began to uh, stay away from the first wife and not recognize her he also began to stay away from his own sisters he never has to take care of them, never has to give them that much attention. And then he only began to give all of his attention to his second wife and his second wife's sister. Now the second wife's sister is in back home, Bangladesh. The first wife, I mean, the, 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 the sorry, second wife, second wife, eventually was brought to the UK by divorcing the first wife. He divorced the first wife and he brought the second wife to the UK. He left the first wife and the children. Now, Sihra Tafriq will make, I did not I didn't add that, Sihra Tafriq will make people twist words and lie also. Sihr tafriq will make people twist words, twist contexts and scenarios and situations, and eventually lie also. But the reason I didn't mention that because um, other sihr can make you do that also. But the way to separate it is is sihr tafriq will do it with people that you love, you or with your mentor love. Okay, so he said to public. Even he went to the masjid and he said, my sons are beating me up. Yeah. 
and they, they are checking me out from their house. He made that public. This is the own father. Whilst his sons, his sons actually that year when he said that actually became Hafiz. They were far away from drug dealing. He lied and he said, my sons are doing drug dealing, right? Um, and they're beating me up. These are all lies. He lied to the public. The reason he did this is because so that he can leave them, right? So public will not shame him that how can you leave your children and, and just for your wife, second wife, right uh, you can leave your children so he wanted to justify himself leaving his children behind he justified it by lying that they are beating him up and they are doing drugs so then he left he left the children even he had little little daughters he left and then he used to give full attention to that second wife and that children, those and that particular children. And he would not recognize it was the first wife he divorced, but the children, the actual children, obviously he would not recognize them. Every interest of them was taken away. So the assets of his assets back home was, was uh, the, sec the second wife's uh, sister took over their, their lands was eating the lands, his income, pension money, all of that was, was eaten by his, his other children. They did not give it to the first children at all, even the, the daughters, yeah. Um, then they bought land and built Basha on it, but they did not add his name. The, the, the second wife did that. They did not add his name to the Basha, even though it was his, his pension money, right? They did all of that. But look how Allah works, subhanAllah. Those three boys, alhamdulillah, they became well known in the community. One of the child, he knew deep down that this was sihr. So this child and eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated him for him to go and study and learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and um, Every time he went, and anywhere he went, he always had a father figure, like very elderly scholar teaching him. So even though his father was missing, he was already replaced with another fatherly figure. And he always used to come around people, experts who are in, in, in the field of dream interpretation, ruqya, and so forth and so on. So this child, from early on, began to learn ruqya, a dream interpretation, and, and, and became expert in, in this field. And subhanAllah, after 40 years of these children being non-existent completely, you can say, he was able to expose the, the second wife and the second wife's sister of what they have been doing for the last 40 years of sihat tafriq and sihat al -washi. Now this case, the example I gave of this uh, case is because for you to realize that how Sihat Tafriq and Sihat Aish can work on a family and completely make the family non-existent. It can make the family non-existent, right? Um, but Allah Jalla Wala is the best of planners. Obviously, it's the best of planners. So the, these two sisters, the second wife and her sister, they planned this. That we're gonna get this guy, we're gonna do Sihat on him, we're gonna get one of, our, one of us married to him, right? And then we're gonna take all of his assets and income. They planned this. It was a complete plan. And they did it very cunningly, very deceptively, because they have sweet tongue. They're very nice to, to your face. And behind the scenes, obviously, they wanna cut, you, cut, you, cut your roots. So this is what they did. But they didn't realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was planning something greater by teaching this child, right? what Sihr al-Tafriq is, how it looks like, what Sihr al is, and how it looks like. And Allah SWT was exposing them in his dreams. He, used, he, could, he could see dreams so clearly, exactly when they did the Sihr, how they did it, why they did it, where they buried it. And he actually went and found his Sihr, Allahu Akbar. He actually went and found the Sihr that they planted, right? All through dreams. So it's amazing that when someone 
you know, wants to completely kill you, completely make you silent and completely destroy you as if you don't exist. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes and, and, and exposes them and also cures them. And now that family who had sihr tafriq on them, right, the siblings, the, 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 the mother, right, all of them slowly, slowly now are getting cured by that one individual who got to find out all the details and he became now an expert, right? So the point I'm trying to make is Sihat Tafriq and Sihat Rishki can completely destroy a family. But as soon as you realize that the Sihat Tafriq on you or on your family, take the necessary means. Because to cure, it may take one year, two years, but as soon as the treatment starts, the cure, Alhamdulillah, you can see, you can see the cure. Okay. Um, and uh, another ajib thing is, subhanAllah, that family did the sihr now. It's like they completely wanted to destroy the other, the first family by slandering, like these, these kids are bad. They wanted to kill our father. You know, they, they checked him out. They made all of these lies and slander in the whole community. But now, because of that one son, that one son, they can't expose anymore. They can't, they can't lie these things anymore because people will say, no, but look at this, look at this son. That one son, you know, can, can completely take away the slander just by his character, just by who he is, he's helping people. Uh, he can't do all of that unless, unless his mother, who had no voice for 40 years, now she's having a voice because of the, through the son, because she's not speaking but she's having a voice through the sun. You slandered about me, I was a bad wife to, to, your, to my husband, but in reality, I wasn't. You guys did sihr, and then you slandered everyone that I was a bad wife. I wasn't a bad wife, I was taking care of my husband. My children were good children, right? So that one child is exposing them, and he's, he's, he doesn't say exposing like, oh, you did sihr, you, you did that, right, publicly. But just by his sheer presence in the society, uh, they are now being silent, they are being exposed, they are being ashamed. Now they come and come out uh, in the society and the faces are dark and black, right? All of these years they made the first wife and her, her children non-existent by slandering and trying to cover the facts of Sihr Tabriq and Sihr Rish. And even at the end, they did Sihr Junoon on the father. So the father, you know, goes mad and insane in the mind that he cannot even um, uh, do anything for, for the interest of his first children. Rather, he does everything in the interest of his second wife's children and her sister. Okay, so subhanAllah, they were completely, you know, um, exposed. Uh, it's amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. So, my point is Sihat Tafiq with Sihat al is deadly, deadly. Um, soon as you realize it, um, work on, on yourself on the treatment. Inshallah, I always say, doesn't matter how severe the Sihat is, as long as you all, the whole together, the family, come together, recite the Quran with the intention of burning all the sources of Sihat, burning all the sources of Ebola, burning all the sources of, 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 of uh, Shayateen, uh, burning, uh, uh, the, the sihr in the houses, you make those intentions, you start together, you spray the house, you do the ghusl, right? And you leave the Quran on 24 hours. It doesn't take long until all of these things are burnt away. Alhamdulillah, you get cured. Okay, it doesn't matter how severe the sihr is. It doesn't take two years before you all are stable and cured if you all do it together. So it's about going to the Raqi, expert who is, who, is, who is caring, who is loving, uh, who wants good for you and the ummah, you feel that. So uh, go to them and then listen to them, get your families involved in the ruqya and start doing the treatments inshallah. Um, I hope I covered the symptoms. And as for the cure specifically when it comes to sihr tafriq, I just quickly mentioned them and then inshallah we will uh, begin to wrap up this lecture. So when you know you've got Sihat Tafriya, okay, intend them. 
when you do your recitation, when you do your du'as, when you pray salawat, intend specifically the source of sihr tafiq to be destroyed. The source could be envy, the source could be greed, the source could be jealousy, the source could be um, revenge and vengeance, right? Whatever the source is, you intend for the source to be burnt away and destroyed, right? And you recite your Quran, you, you do your adhkar, you do your tilawat, you, 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 you do your du'as, you pray, you call to Allah subhanahu with that intention of Allah destroy the sources of sihr, tafriq. And when you recite on your body, because it's all about the heart, massage your heart like this, uh, as, if, as if you're doing tawaf, so anti-clockwise, right? As if you're doing tawaf and then recite whatever you're going to recite. The verse of, of, of Surah Baqarah, where Allah SWT talks about يفرقون uh, بين المرء وزوجي in verse 100 of Surah Baqarah. Okay, so just recite that verse and keep, keep, keep uh, massaging your heart. Keep massaging your heart. Keep massaging your heart. Okay. Well, all the other du'as, Allahumma Rabba al-Nas, adhab al-Bas, ishfi anta shafi, same. But intend though, sihr al-Tafriq. Okay, if there's a shaitan with that sihr al-Tafriq, most likely there is, right? Do the same thing. Do the same thing. Now, if you start seeing stuff while you're reciting, while you're making dua, if you start seeing stuff, then recite or do dua and then blow towards the thing you're seeing. It could be the sihat or it could be shaitan. Blow towards the intent to burn. I saw some said, blow towards the left. Say, I would better imagine blow towards the left. Okay. Now, because you can see it, you say, I can say, I would better and blow towards the thing you're seeing, intending to burn. If you can physically grab it, if it's a physical figure, grab it, break his neck, break his arms, break his legs, and then blow it within his mouth, poke his eyes out, take his tongue out, and blow it, blow inside it until you explode it and burn it to ashes. That's if you can see them. If you can't see them, then if you feel that they're around you, then just blow, close your eyes, blow towards the left or blow where you think their present presence are there, be it sifat or be it, be it shouting. Okay. Also do hijama around your heart and around your head. Because sihat tafiq affects the heart and affects the thinking of thinking straight, the process of thought. So do hijama around your heart and around your head. If you are unable to be intimate with it, also then do it around your hips and, and thighs. Okay. Uh, I will talk, obviously I'm gonna give so many more lectures. There's so much more from I wanna say, but I wanna bombard you with so much information. I just want you to just understand today the symptoms of Sihat Tafriq, a clear symptom. I gave you clear symptoms of Sihat Tafriq. And once you know you have that, I just wanted to make the intention, right? Wallah, destroy the sources of sihr tafriq. If you have sihr aish also, the intend, the, intend that Wallah, destroy the sources of sihr aish. And then I want you to do the treatment. All the treatments you do of ruqya, just intend that. Wallah, destroy the sources of sihr tafriq. And Wallah, destroy the sources of sihr al aish. Right? And do all the treatments, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts of those who, upon whom sihr al-tafriq has been done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy all the sihr al-tafriq amongst the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy all the sihr al-aish that was done amongst families and amongst the Muslims. Allahumma amin. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa an astaghlu wa tabu laik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any questions, inshallah, we will take.
جزاكم الخير الشيخ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم شيخ كان يهمي السلام عليكم كان يهمي شيخ Okay, any questions? Uh, let me see, how do I see questions? <clears throat> okay, how, there's a question here, how do you differ between uh, parents abusing you and, and, and that's why you stay away? Um, and Sihat Tafriya. The way is you feel love and care of your parents. Now that level, love and care you're meant to express, whatever level it is, whatever how, doesn't matter how small amount that love and care is. If you're unable to express that love and care, then you've got Sihat Tafriya. I hope that is clear. So you've got love and care of your parents. There's a, there's, there is that love and care. Just like you're expressing the hate and dislike. That's fine. You've got some hate and dislike towards your parents because of the abuse, no problem. But you still have some love and care. Are you able to express that love and care? If not, then that's your hatha. Any other question? Uh, today we have a lot of technical, we have a lot of technical problems. Um, Give me one, sir. How about you? one let's, let's me take questions one by one, otherwise we'll be, I'm getting bombarded. So okay. one by one, brothers and sisters, yeah, because I have to read them, otherwise I think it gets too much. It yeah, I used to have many dreams about my husband cheating on me, and now I don't see those dreams. Is that a sign that I don't see them as 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 much? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, that's a very good sign. That's a very good sign that uh, maybe you're doing your dhikr and your du'as and you're reciting and, and so forth. Allah subhanahu is protecting you. Uh, so, yeah, um, if you see those dreams, intend to burn them and kill them during the dreams. Intend to Allah to help you and assist you to in the dreams for you to recite and burn the, the dreams that you're seeing is from shaitan or kill, kill, uh, uh, kill the people who are there. They are shaitan. <coughs> Can, can you do hijama on the head of it? No, don't, do not do hijama on the head every month. Brothers and sisters, do not do hijama on the head every month. Do it every three months. Every three months. So do hijama on the head every three months. As for the body, do it every month. Do it every month. I hope this is clear. What if you are abused and you're becoming sick in the marriage while you are convinced? Uh, sisters, calm down. Brothers and sisters, please calm down uh, with the questions. Let me an answer one, then send me, send me another one because there's too many questions coming. And I'm uh, unable to see all of them. Um, Rajiv. So many questions. Rajiv. How do I don't make this chat big? Oh, I've got it. Okay, how can you do treatment as a family to family are completely separate and some members have left Islam? Obviously, you try your best to inform them that we have Sihat Tafriq in the family and you try your best to do, do the uh, treatment as much as possible 
with the intention of killing the family also. So in your intention, have the killing of family, okay? Fusilbay. Fusilbay. Bye, Ben. Bye. I think head is down. Just down. Okay, still down. Two, two fingers. Okay. Um, so, Someone I know feels so scared they can't move at Fajr and don't get out of bed for Fajr. What's the solution? Person has had issues. Um, if one cannot uh, wake up for Fajr Salah, before they go to sleep, firstly, spray their house with the intention of getting up for Fajr Salah and burning away the sihar or the evil or the shouting that prevents them to wake up from, uh, wake up for Fajr Salah. Second, wipe the beds by saying Bismillah. Third, uh, put writer around the hearts, besides the writer, perfume around the hearts, the head, the feet, the feet, hands uh, up to the wrist, around the private areas, and on the bed and on the headboard. They place the writer there with the intention of burning away whatever prevents them from waking up for Fajr, and obviously taking the other means of leaving the, uh, leaving, uh, the alarm on. Also, I advise have recited water next to you in the spray bottle or in a bowl. So you can put some water on your head and on your body, or you can spray it, or you can spray around it when you're trying to wake up and you're, it's, pre it's preventing you from waking up. <clears throat> okay. If your family don't agree, it's sihar. Can you get rid of by yourself, intend them. Intend them on your treatments. Slowly, 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 it will work on them. Also, leave the Quran on in their house 24 hours with the intention of burning away the of separation. This will slowly, slowly work on your work uh, uh, on, on the household people. <clears throat> if your husband doesn't see that they see her, but as a wife, you can see the effects, what is the best thing to do? Best thing is to, as I said, leave the Quran on, yes. intend him in the treatment, and also go and see a Raqi or go and see someone respectful that he respects that will listen, listen to them. How do we handle it? As I said, intend the source of the sihr to be burnt whilst you do the treatment. So, intend the source sooner or later, the once the sihr is being destroyed. The shaitan will get weak and weak. As long as you're targeting the source of sihr, it will eventually, shaitan will eventually get weak because its power lies in the, in the sihr. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh, can you hear me? And if it's the jinn magician, the shaitan is magician himself, then when you intend the source of the uh, shaitan, so you intend, well, that is to the source of the shaitan, it will slowly, slowly, begin to become weak and eventually it will either will have choice, it will have no choice either to, to leave or either to die. How do you find out who is doing the Sihar Tafriq? I've written one article already at the Honest and Fitter Center. And I'm writing another article to, to tell you, to uh, inform you how to uh, find out who's doing sihr generally. So inshallah, I'll read those articles. But generally uh, speaking, you'll see them in the dreams. You'll see them in the dreams when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're a bewilderness in the beginning, then Allah will show them in the, in the dreams. Um, uh, or you'll feel you'll feel weird around them, either you'll feel fear around them, or you'll feel intimidated by them, you'll feel intimidation, or you'll feel inferior to them. These are all signs that this person is 
doing a CFS. There are practical signs like they will want to know about you, about you, or front of you they're very nice and kind and generous, right? They're very loving and caring. They have very sweet tongue. They have a beautiful face front of you, but behind the scenes they they are gossiping, slandering about you. It's a sign that these people are envious of you and jealous of you. They might be greedy, and then most likely they're doing CFS. Assalamu Chef, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'll come back okay, so, um, Shall I continue to read the questions, Chef, for you? Yes, please. If you can read me the questions, that will be better. Uh, there's some people who want to be unmuted um, to ask the questions. Can I do that, Chef? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, Om Tariq, I'm going to unmute yourself so you can ask questions, inshallah. Sure. Asalaamu As Alaikum, I'm Tariq. You can unmute yourself to ask questions. Okay, anyone else who wants to ask questions, they can raise their hand so you can continue to ask questions. I'll do the next one. Um, Shamila. Okay, the next one, uh, Tanjina. Hello. As Hello, Yes. Hi, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Um, basically, I just wanted to um, ask, so you see my mom and dad, um, they separated. Um, my mom became very, very unwell. Um, it's, it's caused a division between me and my brother. And it just seemed to get worse. So when I, 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 did, I said no to one proposal with my dad's family, um, since then, it's been really bad with me and my dad. Like, he's always misunderstanding me or even when I'm, started to do rukia like have have a bath or something like this he will somehow just let it out on me does that mean it's related to the sihr of the family when i do it for myself yeah continue inshallah continue uh, include them in your treatment in the intentions inshallah to and play the quran 24 hours in the house with the intention of curing the, the house and burning away the sources of sihr of uh sihr of tafriq and sihr of Aish. And so forth and so on. Make this intention, inshallah, it will eventually become weaker. Um, what if my mum and my dad don't live together? Um, they obviously they, they don't believe, they won't understand about Rukia. So if I was to make detentions by reciting Quran, will yeah. can this burn yeah. it off? Yeah, make make the intention. Okay, Jazakallah over there. Okay, uh, Sister Tenjino, um, she can unmute herself and ask the question. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, well, I just wanted to know how do you differentiate between um, Sahel or just like family toxicity? Family what? Like just toxic family members. How do you differentiate between that and Sahel? Uh, as we said, you've got love and care, but you're unable to express it. Okay. Okay, the next uh, question, Abdul Rahman, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair for your benefits. Um, I want to ask, Sheikh, would you say it's a clear sign, for example, there's a family member who might have um, taken the hair of another family member completely out of the blue, almost like they planned and waited for it to happen and they just kind of combed their hair and just kept that hair. Just, obviously, it sounds uh, very suspicious and unusual. Say that one more time, I couldn't hear the last part. What did they do? So it's like they almost planned um, a time where they would go over and sit with them and comb their hair to keep their hair sort of thing. Um, was... No doubt this sounds very, very, um, very unusual. So, yeah, if, if, it was, if it was not done from day one, like they were not close from day one, like this. And uh, keeping their hair, obviously they should not keep their hair. Oh, they should throw that away. Um, by saying Bismillah. But if they keep the head, that's a clear sign that they're doing sihat. What kind of sihat? Allah knows best. Uh, it depends on the symptom that the sister or the brother eventually has. But that's one of the signs of doing, doing sihat. Hair and nails. Every time you cut your hair and cut your nails, make sure you say Bismillah. 
Okay, so Jazakallah Khair. Jazakallah Khair. Um, the next question, uh, HM, you can unmute yourself. Um, I, I, want, I know you talked about massaging your head anti-clockwise, but if you're afflicted in the head as well, um, what can you do? Say that one more time, sister. I could not catch, catch that part you said. Sorry, but I know you said um, on, your, on your speech, you said if it's afflicted on your heart, then to massage your head, um, your heart anti-clockwise. Yeah. I actually feel it a lot more in my head um, and I've had yeah. it on my down. Do it on your head, same thing. Same thing, so anti-clockwise. Yeah. yeah, do it on your head. On your body when you massage, you do it uh, anti-clockwise, I basically it's tawaf. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're doing tawaf yeah. as if you're doing tawaf and you're, mm -hmm. because they, 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 this is how they tie it. So you're not untie it. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, so they tie this way. The clock right, and we are going to untie it by doing the recitation. And can I also ask, brother, if somebody, um, I know the previous brother mentioned about hair and stuff, so somebody, um, I know I know about 10 years ago I went to Bangladesh and I had my hijab on, and somebody I know came and said, oh, we're just checking your hair. Um, so could they use hair to do various things? Yeah, of course. Hair, nails, these are the typical things people use. Uh, uh, or do, to do say or clothes, hair, nails, and clothes. Okay. Photos as well. Pictures, pictures and photos. Okay. Okay. The next question, uh, Kamalun Nisa. You can unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. I wanted to ask about um, can it cause health problems and make you sick and stop you from having children? Is that could that be part of the atten intention? Yeah, yeah. If 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 the symptoms are to that level where uh, you are unable to be close to your husband uh, and 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 be intimate and have have children and so forth and so on. That's sihr, sihr uh, of tafliq, no doubt, and there could be even sihr al-ishq there, there could be a shaitan that is preventing you uh, from coming close to your husband. So intend both, intend sihr al-tafliq to burn away the uh, uh, sources of sihr al-tafliq and also sources of sihr al-ishq. The, the, the problem is that I'm sick and I, um, the doctors have said that we, we have to have fertility treatment to get pregnant. That, yeah. And I'm wondering whether that is sihr or whether that's just a, 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 a problem because I'm sick. <laughs> now you can take that, you can take medical route. You can take the medical route. I always advise brothers and sisters to take, to take the medical route because illness is all part of the three. So it, it can be medical, it can be physical, it can be spiritual. So it take all the three routes for you to become cured and stable, inshallah. Inshallah, Jazakallah. Uh, the next question, are you, S, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, I have a question regarding um, if we if we become aware of someone committing shirk or sihir, what are we supposed to do with the information? Or what is advised, like, what is the advised way to conduct ourselves? Uh, are we supposed to expose them or be quiet to protect their family relations or? Yeah, firstly, you, you have to look at, um, uh, is it going to cause more harm? Uh, if, it's, if it's going to cause more harm, the best thing to do is you, you to avoid those people. Uh, indicate whoever your immediate family is that I'm, I'm not going to be around that individual because I feel they, they're hurting us, they're doing sihr. And if it means to work with them, work with them. Uh, you don't have to expose them, except to the people that are being harmed. You can just tell, tell them that this is she or he is sahib, and then your job is done. Don't go, don't go to the level of authority where you try to take them into account, because we don't have the authority at the moment, sadly, in the ummah, okay? especially in the communities that we live in. 
So the best thing is to tell the people indirectly, directly that they are committing sin. Obviously, you need to have proof. Without proof, don't if then you, you can you can be slander. So you need to have proof. Proof either they themselves admit yes, I communicate with the jinn. Yeah, the khalas as a sign they are sihat, or they everyone knows that they take they ask people's names and parents' names and so forth, or they take hairs and clothes. It's if then khalas also the evidence is no needed. But if they are subtle, they do it very silently and discreetly, then evidences are needed. Um, and there could be practical evidence, like for example, they're very sweet to you, front of you, but behind the scenes, they're very nasty and evil, they slander you, or they are, they ask you in a in a very very um, intimate stuff to ask about you. That's another sign. So these are the things you can uh, gather together and say it to your loved ones that you know this person uh, most likely is uh, is best us to avoid them. Inshallah, this is the best way to do it, and not to go into the category of accounting accountability because you don't have the authority the best is to avoid them and if, if it means to work out them work out them. Uh, the next question uh, which is Zannat um, you can unmute yourself inshallah Asalaamu Alaikum Okay, I can't hear them. Okay, then Abdul Rahman wants to ask another question. She leave one question, one question for each individual. Okay. Sorry, Sheikh. Uh, do I have permission to ask the second question? We said before is one question, uh, not in this session, but generally it should be one question to everyone, so everyone has a chance. Okay, no problem. I'll I'll, leave, I'll leave someone else have a chance. Inshallah. Okay, uh, if anyone else wants to ask a question, please raise your hand. I'm going to ask Zanna to uh, unmute yourself, then you can ask a question. It's not working. Okay. Yeah, the mic's not working. Asalaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. Yes, we can hear you. Um, um, Sheikh, um, I'd like to ask, um, 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 as a family, me and my husband, we was been separated for a long time. And we, but still, we was been trying to get together. Uh, is interested in in children and family to be together, and you know. But we both like we wanted to be you know making a happy family you know, and as a regular normal family, but somehow we do get to argument you know is extend to is is get a bit far, and we. We, we are now get, get together, but still we have a, but in me, like I have a, I wanted, I have a respect, I have a love, but at some point I get like um, the feeling that I don't, I don't want to live with him. So sometimes I feel like, you know, because of his, you know, behavior and attitude and all of that, but believing in that to still, I want to live with him as well. So, you know, there's a, a sign of sihat tafriya, especially if you have love and you can express it. So when you when you have the love uh, mm. and you feel it, are you able to express it? Um, I do sometimes. I do express. I do go to him. I do tell him that. But sometimes I think is it's it's a seher or it's because sometimes he gets in you know, abused in you know, a verbally and uh, physically as well. So mm. sometimes I think it's because of that that I don't want to express my love and care for him. Oh, but when you do feel it, yeah, around him and you feel it, can you express yeah. it then? I do sometimes, and, and sometimes I, I go, but I, I, I come back. Answer my question. When you do feel it, yeah. can you express it? Um, yes, I do sometimes, but I don't do... I, I didn't ask that question. I didn't, okay. I didn't say sometimes, not sometimes. Okay. I said, so when you feel it, yeah. when you feel it, can you express mm -hmm. it? I can. Well, that's, that's not so tough yet. But if you feel and you can't express it, that's your tough. Okay, that's the difference in between that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. The next question, uh, um, Shamima, I'm going to ask to 
unmute yourself, inshallah. Just give me one second. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Can you hear me? Alaikum salam, Captain. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Rise up. Okay. Well, I think we need to finish soon. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any more questioners. Um, okay, Sheikh, so we'll end uh, the session for today, inshallah. But before I end the session, I just wanted to uh, just make a quick announcement. Okay, Sheikh. So anyway, Sheikh, Jazakum la khair. We really enjoyed this lecture. And Alhamdulillah, I hope uh, everyone else enjoyed it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from everyone and cure them and uh, make all their affairs easier for them. Uh, everyone who's participated online, I, can't, I kindly ask you to visit uh, the Google page, um, type in Fitra Center and leave us a review. Every review counts. There's 70 uh, plus listeners, Alhamdulillah. Uh, so imagine all of you uh, leaving the review uh, on Google for us. It will help us as well. And, uh, um, anyway, Sheikh, would you like to end it? Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of, all of us and all the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the affairs, uh, affairs and of the Ummah easy, smooth. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to overcome our challenges and difficulties in the best of manners. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us from sihat tafriq and sihat al-ishq uh, and sihat al-junoon, uh, sihat al-rabt, sihat uh, al-ta'atil al-zawaj, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our families, unite uh, us, uh, our spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala marry those who are unable to marry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give children to those who are unable to have children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give risk to those who are unable to attain risk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us as families, strong families, sweet families, steadfast families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also make the ummah strong, ummah through us, by us. جزاكم الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته